Um, so I'm Jess. Uh, I'm just going to try to give you a quick advertisement uh, for the importance of trying to find uh, objective branch structure from spatial redundancy in a wave function, maybe the universe, but anything in a many-body wave function. Um, so the question I think that you should find important, uh, whether or not you like the solution that I'm driving towards, uh, is this question, what are the branches in the wave function? How do we make that uh, precisely defined? Um, by branches, I just, there's a, right now they're just vaguely defined, and that is the issue. You can think about it as uh, kind of uh, uh, some sort of orthogonal decomposition of the wave function such that you can't tell the difference between that with any feasible measurement and a uh, incoherent mixture. Um, or you can think about it as whatever the things that Everett uh, interpretation is supposed to produce. Uh, this is kind of the, the modern, abstract, and non-anthropocentric -anthropo version of the preferred basis problem. And it's equivalent uh, to the set selection problem in consistent histories. Um, and I think it would remove a persistent vagueness um, from quantum mechanics. Uh, if you could get a solution to this, meaning you could get a time-dependent uh, decomposition of the wave function into orthogonal branches that have a classical interpretation, uh, it would get, reduce quantum mechanics to a, a well-defined stochastic theory, uh, where the, bran the, the branches at any, every given time would give you kind of a menu of choices, and each one would have a classical interpretation in terms of macroscopic configurations. Um, so what I think we should do, and what is the, the interesting thing to do, is to solve this problem without postulating a preferred measurement or observer, a preferred system or environment split, or a preferred set of quasi-classical observables. Um, and so what I think is a very promising avenue, and one that's compelling, uh, but is not necessarily the thing you should think to agree that this question is important, is to assume one thing, which is spatial locality. Uh, so we're going to put gravity aside. Uh, and in particular, we're going to use the microscopic tensor structure that that induces. Uh, so you can imagine this is just you're breaking the world. The only thing you're going to assume is breaking it up into qubits. Uh, and you're not going to assume anything about macroscopic systems. And the power of this is it from this very fundamental assumption, it gives you access to the rich structure of multipartite entanglement. So the, the, the key intuition uh, that the approach that I've been going on is based on is, is, is uh, something uh, that, that comes from uh, you know, the pioneering work of, of Wojciech Zurich and, and, and quantum Darwinism, and the key idea is, is redundancy. Um, the, the things that we call classical objective events are recorded redundantly in many spatial disjoint regions. This seems to be one aspect of things that we consider classical and objective, and I think the surprising, uh, the evidence right now is it may surprisingly be pretty much all you need to uh, classify it fully. Uh, so this is just the idea that many observers can walk around and access information about classical observables, uh, observables separately uh, in spatially disjoint regions. So I just mean here multiple different uh, observables, uh, each colored, with their records located at different points in space. So uh, the kind of main results here for just this preliminary investigation is that although there are things like the short code, a state of the universe the universe could be in, uh, that exhibits arbitrary redundancy of non commutative information. So in this case, these are the spatial distribution of records for, say, the X and Z uh, information in a, uh, a coded qubit. Uh, <clears throat> but as long as you require that no two records of one observable overlap all records of another, then that set of observables satisfying that uh, are all mutually compatible, which by that I mean that it divine, uh, def defines a joint classical branch, uh, branch decomposition uh, on which all these observables, the, the branches are simultaneous eigenstates of them all. Uh, so then given only a preferred length scale, which is something you might take from the uh, correlations uh, that you find in a wave function, you can obtain a classicality criterion that, he, that can be checked on individual observables. So you don't have to check all possible observables. You can just look at one and immediately diagnose classicality. Uh, so this is the last slide. Uh, I think this is compelling because it lets you ask a lot of questions that you weren't able to ask before. Uh, and I will just leave them up there. Um, but I think they're very exciting. And in particular, the connection to thermalization and closed quantum systems. Is this related, as I think it is, to the uh, eventual dissolution of branches? Thank you. Thank you.